Have you or a loved one been recently diagnosed with cancer and it's got you afraid? We're going to be talking about this today. It's going to be a word of encouragement and a message from the Lord. Get ready to learn about healing, how to activate your faith, see your miracle, and keep your healing. Understand how to accurately use the prophetic and healing power of your words to create your miracle. Discover what the Bible says today on Empowered for Healing and Miracles with Becky Dvorak, as together we fulfill the Great Commission with God's healing power. Hello, everybody. I'm Becky Dvorak, and I want to welcome you to Empowered for Healing and Miracles. Have you or a loved one been recently diagnosed with cancer and it's got you afraid? You're frightened. You, you want to believe, but you're not sure if you're able to believe and you need some encouragement in this area. Well, today I'm going to be teaching you what God's Word says about about this situation that you're in, and we're going to answer some questions, and I'm going to give you some very wonderful testimonies of people that have activated their faith and received their much-needed miracles, and this is to encourage you today. And so you may be asking, why me? What, what have I done? Why, why am I being attacked this way? You're a Christian, you believe in healing, you believe in God, you pray, you read your Bible every day, but you're just not sure why you are being attacked. Well, I want to read to you from, from the um, book of John in chapter 16 and verse 33, and it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, as we look at this portion of Scripture, and this is Jesus speaking, I want to make it perfectly clear that tribulation means difficult times. He was, he was forewarning us that in this world, as believers, yes, as followers of Jesus, in this world, we will face difficult times. And so that's, that's the reason why you have been attacked you know, sometimes people get all, all full of guilt and, and it's like, what have I done? What have I done? You probably haven't done anything wrong, but we live in a fallen world. And this fallen world happened when, when Adam and Eve sinned and, and corruption entered into this earth as a consequence of their sin. And, and so it was corruption of the world and also corruption entered into the human body. But I want to be an encouragement to you today, just like Jesus' word says. He said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. But in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, he's not saying be happy because you have been diagnosed with cancer or your loved one has been diagnosed with cancer. He's saying be of good cheer because you have the answer. You have Jesus Christ, and He paid a heavy price with His blood for your healing, and He's given you what you need. Everyone has been given what they need to access their healing, and this includes you and your loved one. He's given everyone a measure of faith, a measure of faith. And what does He say to us? He says that if we have faith, the size of a mustard seed. You know, that, that seems like a little teeny bit of faith, but I'm telling you, if you take that little bit of faith and you activate it in, in the right direction, which is in the redemptive blood of Jesus, that little bit of faith, that little tiny bit of faith can move that mountain, can move that mountain of cancer in your life. And so, you know, don't look at yourself like, like you can't win this because God created you in His mere image. You were created in the image of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they are more than a conqueror, and God created you to be more than a conqueror. He created you to win. He created you to win over this cancerous battle, and that's what it is. It's a battle. Am I saying it's going to be easy? No, not necessarily. 
but you have what it takes to overcome this. You have faith and, and you stir your faith. How do you actually encourage your faith to believe for your healing? One, you're going to have to get into the healing word of God, into his healing promises. You're starting with Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 that says, by his stripes, you are healed. You have been made whole. And so you activate your faith in the healing word, the healing promise of God. And you and you speak out those promises. And I'm telling you, the more you speak out those promises of God of healing, the, and, and, and you speak it out loud, you will hear yourself saying those promises of God, those healing words. And the more you will actually believe those words, those words will get deep down into your spirit, deep down into the, your heart. And, and before you know it, you will start hearing your own self speaking out the healing promises of God. And according to the word of God, Proverbs 18, 21, we have the power of life and death in our words. And I'm going to teach you a um, little later on what that actually means and how we, how we are to use the power of life and death in our words in this, with this cancer diagnosis over yourself or your loved one. But God has given you everything you have need of to overcome this cancer, to actually beat it, to actually overcome, to be healed and be delivered and free from it. And, and like I said, it is faith and you have been given a measure of faith and what you're going to have to do, you are going to have to strengthen that faith and, and you just keep at it, you keep at it. It's like working a muscle and, and the more you exercise that muscle, the stronger it gets and the more it can lift up more weight. It can lift up the more it can fight, the stronger it is. Well, it's the same with your faith. You're going to have to exercise that faith muscle. And you might think that sounds too simple. Well, praise God. Jesus already paid the price for us. So he's given us the mandate, what the, the command that we are to believe if we believe it's always if we believe. And so you do have to exercise your faith right now for the battle that you are facing, the battle that you are in. But I'm telling you, all things are possible. All things are possible, not on your own strength, but with God, all things are possible. And, but you first have to choose life. You're going to have to choose to believe. You're going to have to choose to ignore the, the symptoms. Yes, you are. You're going to have to overlook those lumps and bumps in your body. You are, you're going to have to ignore those things and say, no, I'm going to focus on my God because with God, all things are possible. It's not something you can do on your own strength. But God didn't intend you to. He intended you to look to him for your strength in this battle. And that's why he says in John 16, 33, Jesus says, but be of good cheer because I have overcome. And because Jesus overcame, he's the one that paid the price. He's the one that fought the battle for us. But he says, be of good cheer, be of good cheer because you already have the answer to win. You already have all that you need to, to overcome this battle, this cancer. I'm telling you, you've got what it takes. You've got the redemptive blood of Jesus. He's given you a measure of faith and you choose to live. And as you choose to live, exercise your faith and keep your eyes fixed on God. You have what it takes to conquer this cancer diagnosis answer that diagnosis of cancer. You know what it is? It's called a spirit of death and that spirit of death is a demon. It's a deadly one and it takes its order orders from Satan and it's bent upon our destruction to steal, to kill and to destroy. That's John 10, 10. That's the thief, the devil. And what does the cancer do? It steals, it kills and it destroys. But God, Jesus says, 
in the same verse, but I have come to give you life and life in abundance. And so what I'm talking about is not only getting free from cancer, but also to start living the life God created you to have, which is an abundant life in him. And, and that abundant life includes healing for your body in the name of Jesus. And so, you know, how do we, how do we command this spirit of death out of us? How do we do it? With our words, we're going to give it an eviction notice. And we're not going to allow it to have squatters rights, if you know what I mean. We're not going to let it linger. We're giving it a complete eviction notice. And we're saying, get out of my body in Jesus name. And so right now, just lay your hand on your body. Yes. Even as you're learning this and hearing this, you do it now and you can do it as often as you want in the name of Jesus. And you're going to say in the name of Jesus right now, you just repeat it in the name of Jesus. I command all cancerous tumors. I command all cancerous cells out of my body in Jesus name. Cancer, spirit of death. I give you an eviction notice and I command you to leave my temple. I will not share my temple, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I will not share my temple with with cancer or, or the spirit of death or any sickness and disease for that matter. In the name of Jesus, I command you out. You have been served an eviction notice and you may not have squatters rights in my temple, in my body. You leave my body and you leave it now in the name of Jesus. Why? Because with your words, you have the power of life and death in every word you speak. And so, you know, you want to be really careful with what you say, because we live in, 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 in the reality of our words that we have been speaking. If we've been speaking cancer, fear, death, well, that's what's going to be developing in our body. And when we, the more we talk about that cancer diagnosis, the more you give strength to it, you actually strengthen it with your words. And we need to be very careful. You do. You need to be super careful about not claiming it with your words. Don't use words like my cancer. I know what the world teaches. They say you have to accept it. And so they teach my, 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 and they put a disease at the end of it. But I'm telling you, we don't want to lay claim of that cancer. No, we don't. You don't want it. You want to get rid of it. And that's not being in denial. No, you do not want to claim cancer as being your own. Because when you use that word, when you personalize it and, and, and you use those pronouns like I have or my, and then you say the word cancer or whatever it is, what you do is you lay claim of it. And when you do that, you give it permission. You give it permission to enter into your body, to stay there, to remain, to live in your body and to take control of it. And it will. Why? Because without realizing it, you have been giving it your permission. You may be thinking, wow, the way the way I'm talking right now to you, it may sound as if this cancer has a mind of its own, that it's something living. Well, you know what? It is. It is something living in your body. And, and the Lord tells us in, in Luke 10, 19, and he says, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you hear that? Jesus gave you and I all authority as believers, followers of him, his disciples, he's given us all authority over Satan and all of his wicked works. I'm telling you, this cancer is not from God. You've got to settle that in your heart because it steals, kills, and destroys. It cannot be from God. Only every good and perfect gift comes from the Father up above. Healing and strength and deliverance are good gifts. Cancer and sickness and all of that, premature death, are not of God. 
And so you want to make sure that you use your authority over this. I one time had this vision. I was writing one of my books. You know, I have books I write about healing, faith and healing and how to obtain your miracle all the time. And so one of my books I was writing about the authority of the believer and I asked God for an example and he immediately showed me this giant size microscope and I had to climb up a ladder to to get to it. Now this was a vision and and I and when I got to the top of the ladder I looked down into into the eyepiece of the microscope and God was speaking to me and he said, what do you see? And before I could answer his question, he said, it's sickness and disease. And then he asked another question, what is it doing? And again, before I had a chance to even answer it, he answered his own question. He said, it's moving. And then he took me to Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28. Let us make people in our image according to our likeness. And, and he said that we were to have dominion and we were to subdue things and that he gave us authority over everything that moves. And he said that sickness and disease, it moves. It's a living teeny tiny creature that gets inside of the body and makes people sick. And he said, you have authority over it. So you are not going to accept that cancer. You are not going to accept it. You, you give it its eviction notice now in the name of Jesus. You command it out of your body now because God has given you all the authority of Jesus to overcome and to be a victor in this situation. We'll be right back. It's his name. His word says that by his stripes I am healed. And you know, it also says in Psalm 118, 17, and this is a verse that I, if I were you, it's one of those verses that I would write out and, and I would hang it up all over my house. I'd have it in my Bible, whatever. But it says in Psalm 118, 17, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Did you hear that? I shall not die, but live. That's choosing life. That's choosing to live. And you know what? That's choosing to fight. You have to fight your enemy. You have to fight him. But you know, I want to, I want to give you some amazing testimonies about this because I, as a healing evangelist, I've ministered to many people that have been diagnosed with cancer. And we have seen, I have seen many, many healed of cancer. I mean, cancer just gone gone and the doctors don't even know what to do with it. I want to share a couple testimonies to stir your faith. There was one woman and this woman had, I believe she had three children and she's a Christian woman and she, you know, is involved in her local church. She loves the Lord. She prays. Um, she, she spends a lot of time in intercessory prayer and you know, she's faithful to God and she was diagnosed with cancer and she had breast cancer and she had she had a large mass name of Jesus in Jesus name I speak life into my body in Jesus name in the name of Jesus I speak recreation to every cell in my body they are cancer free and cancer proof and that woman went back to her doctor and they could not find it they searched and searched and they could not find it Another woman wrote a couple days later and the same thing happened to her and they insisted she had it and she says, no, my Jesus healed me and it was totally gone. I have just one report after another after another, but I want to take time for you right now and let's pray. So lay your hand on your body wherever, wherever it is in Jesus name and just say in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of death. I renounce this cancer. I renounce every cancerous cell and tumor in my body in the name of Jesus. I curse it. I command it out. I give you an eviction notice. I will not accept this and I do not allow you to remain in my body in the name of Jesus. No more. Leave my body and leave it at once now in Jesus name. And you hold true to your confession of faith. I'm telling you, you hold true to that confession of faith in Jesus name. For those of you that have just received a cancerous diagnosis, God says to you, fear not, fear not, for I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am faithful and true to you. I hear you. I see your need. 
and I will not forget you. And I have released the healing power into your body. You have released it through the power of your words. And I've heard your words and I'm faithful and true to you. You be blessed and you know that God is faithful and true and his word is true. You confess his word and you speak his word and you act like you're cancer free right now in Jesus name. Now God has a future for you and he desires for you to fulfill your destiny and he's given you the ability to do so with faith, the power of words and faith in action. And now you be blessed and you be free. You be delivered. God loves you. I will see you next week. And I believe God has something very, very special for you. A marvelous report. We'll see you next week. God bless you.